Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're just going to have a quick little chat about how you size ESCs and H-bridges or any other motor controller for any type of brushed motor or brushed DC motor as we've got here. So what I've got here is the micro metal gear motor. These things are a pretty common motor used in both the UK and US type of ant weight robots. Uh, the US version of the ant weight robots being a little bit heavier but these motors still work rather well for both classes. Uh, so once you have a motor you need to work out your speed controller for it. So I've got two different types of speed controller here. This one here is an ESC or electronic speed controller. Now this one I got from China and it cost me about 10 bucks and it is a 10 amp ESC. So this thing is designed to plug directly into a radio receiver like this one uh, and convert the signal that this produces directly into something that the motor can deal with and run the motor back and forth. These ones over here, these are H-bridges. So these are essentially just amplifiers. Whatever signal you put into the inside, they give on the outside at the full input voltage of whatever you're running. Basically these things are drivers to run a motor, but you need to generate a different type of signal than a receiver does uh, to actually power these things and run a, uh, a motor with them. So I talk about these because I use them all the time in my ant weights when I use an Arduino board to uh, receive the signal and then also convert that received signal into something that I can pump through these H-bridges. Now, just a quick note, any and all brushed ESCs like this guy, they do have a H-bridge in them. In fact, I would warrant to guess that these four black squares you can see at the bottom down here, that is a H-bridge. It's just the ESCs you'll buy also have secondary chips on them, or primary chips realistically on them, that are what take the signal out of the signal wire here and convert it uh, into what's called PWM to send through this H-bridge and then out to the motor to get your control over this thing. So the main thing we're, one, like, we're looking for when we are trying to size an ESC or a H-bridge is the amount of current this motor will draw. So there are three different types of current that we need to worry about. There is inrush current, running current, and then there is stall current. So now uh, inrush current and stall current actually turn out to be pretty much identical in this sense and then running current very much depends on how much load is put on the output shaft. A lot of uh, what you'll see around the place is motors will come spec'd with a no load current which means that when they're just plugged in exactly like I've got mine right now with nothing on the output shaft they'll take a set amount of current but that current is not very useful to us because when you plug this thing into a robot uh, it is going to have load on this output shaft. It's going to be doing work to push that robot around. So it's going to be drawing way more than the no load current. So we're going to have a quick look at what I mean by all of these types of currents. So I just have a, a quick, draw a quick little graph up here on the table for you. So we've got current on this axis here, and then we're going to put uh, time along this axis. So when you start a motor up the first time, you get what's called inrush current where you get a nice little spike and then it drops back down. And if the motor is running like this one is right now with nothing on the output shaft, then this is your no load current down here. This amount of current in this space is your no load current. And this amount of current here is your inrush current. So as you can see, you get a large spike as the motor gets moving for the first time and then you get a drop off to your no load current point down here. But as I said, that is not very useful to us because it means the motor is doing no work. If you apply a load to the motor, then you will see that the current goes back up again, back up to the same point as the inrush current. And at this point, you actually have what's called stall current. So stall current is when something is holding the, the edge of the, the end of the motor shaft so tightly that the motor can't actually run anymore. It is still going to draw a current and it's going to draw a lot of current when the motor is stalled out, uh, but the output shaft is not going to move because the motor can't produce enough power to overcome whatever obstacle you have gripping at the end of the shaft. And in this case, with this particular motor, I would not be able to hold this uh, hard enough to actually get 
this stall current condition to occur. It would slip out of my hands or it would move it. Uh, I wouldn't actually be able to get this to stall exactly like that. So now we need to work out how we actually measure this stall current because this is what we need to be uh, sizing our motors for. We need to make sure that when we plug this motor in, if the motor stalls out, the H-bridge or the ESC isn't going to burn out. Because if you put these things into any robot, so a combat robot or any other type of robot, a stall is something that could possibly happen. So you don't want to be burning components out every time you stall it. You want to actually have some way of making sure that this thing is okay. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take a multimeter, we're going to jam that into the two uh, contacts at the end of the motor here. So I've just got a multimeter here. I'm going to leave that on the table. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that to resistance. And in my case, I've got it set to uh, 200, uh, which means that it's going to look for things in the order of 100 ohms or less, because these motors don't have a whole lot of current uh, resistance in them. And yeah, once we've got the resistance, then we can calculate the stall current. So I'm just going to jam my probes into here and we should see um, there we go so now we've got a value on there and it looking it's looking like that's about 12 ohms so that's our resistance we've got 12 ohms across the motor lead so now what we need to do is we need to use the equation V equals IR that is the uh, one equation that you need for anything electrical so V is voltage I is current and R is resistance. So in this case, our resistance, this guy here, this is 12 ohms. I is what we're looking for and V is the voltage coming off of our battery. So if you're using a good LiPo battery, this is 8.4 volts at full val. Uh, so this is for 2S, you're getting 8.4 volts. So what you end up with is I equals V on R like this. And essentially, this is basically 10 ohms. So what you end up with is uh, about 800. So approximately, for this motor, you're approximately looking at 800 milliamps. So that is how you work out your stall current, which is this guy here. And then you can rate your ESCs according to this stall current. So this guy over here, as I said at the very start, this is a 10 amp ESC. Now, this I said, as, as I said, did come from China, so I wouldn't trust uh, this 10 amp rating. I would probably trust this up to maybe 5 amps. Um, I would definitely would not trust it all the way up to 10 amps. As for, when you buy things from China, sometimes the, uh, the values that they give you can be a little bit off. So I would put a, a small safety margin on that and say, We'll trust it up to 5 amps, but even then, that means with our 800 milliamp um, run here for this, or 800 milliamp stall current for this motor, this ESC could run 5 of these motors in parallel. So that means that you run kind of one point from here into one of your plugs, and you run the same side in, of 5 motors into the same point on the same plug, and the same on the other side and you would end up running five of these motors with this, what's supposedly 10 amp, but we're gonna say is five amp ESC. Now, as you can tell, that is huge. That th means this thing can handle way too much current, and we really don't need this much current draw. Uh, so we don't actually need a 10 amp ESC like this in an amp weight robot. And that's actually why I started doing Arduino stuff. This. ES, uh, this H-bridge here is actually a dual H-bridge, so each one of these chips is its own H-bridge. That can handle 800 milliamps, which means this thing here is the perfect size to handle one of those motors that we've been looking at on each side. So I can run two motors, because I have the two 800 milliamp H-bridges, I can run two of those motors off this thing, and when I plug that into my Arduino, I can get a perfect signal out of them and run them like that. Then this last one over here is actually kind of a special case. It uses a different H-bridge chip. It's still a dual H-bridge chip, but this can run 1.6 amps through each of the H-bridge is in its chip, which means that I could actually run two of these per side in this H-bridge chip. And that's going to be important because coming up, I am actually building a four-wheel drive robot, which means I need this H-bridge to run 
all four of these motors at the same time. So there you go, that was been, has been a quick overview of how I personally size motors um, for, or oh, size uh, ESCs for uh, motors and all of that kind of stuff. And this continues to apply using this same formula and the same style all the way up to even stuff like this. This is a 30 amp ESC that I run uh, in my featherweight combat robots and I size that exactly the same way. So as long as you're using a brushed DC motor, this uh, technique will apply. So there you go, I hope you guys found that uh, interesting and useful. This actually came from a comment on my channel. Uh, so if you have something kind of robotics related that you want uh, some explanation on or want a little bit of help with, please let me know in the comments down below and I will either let you know what I know or I'll do some research and we can learn something new together. So there you go, that has been this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.